Thank you to Space Flight Simulator for sponsoring this video. What's up, Star fans? Jack here with another Starship update. This week, shielding installation on the orbital launch mount kicked into high gear ahead of a prospective first launch, we hope, of Starship in March. Also this week, Ship 26 was cryo-proof tested, Ship 25 departed the launch site and headed back to the production site, and then to the Massey test site. We don't know why yet, but we will discuss. And we also got a peek into the Starlink building. Also, Ship 27 was fully stacked in the high bay. Now that is quite a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. You may remember from the previous Starbase update that Booster 7 received a new hydraulic power unit on its south side, while the HPU on the north side was removed. They were very quick to replace the one on the north side as well, with a new HPU being installed in place of the previous one on February 18th. This week we also saw work resumed on Booster 7's aft section. We also saw workers this week resuming work on the engine section for Booster 7, after the spin prime and quick disconnect tests we saw last week. Here we can see the dance floor being lifted up, and on top, there are many pieces of engine shielding, which if you remember from the last update, had been removed. It seems like SpaceX removed the shields, worked on the engines that didn't quite work properly on the 31 engine static fire test, then tested them, and put the shields back on. This likely indicates that whatever issue those engines had, they were fixable, and no Raptor engine swaps were needed, which is further backed up by the fact that we haven't seen any Raptors moved to or from the launch site. Over at the Remedios test article storage area, next to the rocket garden, we saw the NC-31 test nose cone lifted onto the structural test stand. This test stand and nose cone will likely be rolled out to Massey's in the near future for testing, simulating all the loads that are exerted on it during flight and validating this design. Next door to the Remedios Avenue storage area in the rocket garden, the stand that Booster 4 sits on is being worked on for some reason. You may remember last week that I mentioned they were working on the stand that the scrapped aft section of Booster 8 is sitting on. Well, it looks like SpaceX is working on multiple booster transport stands for some reason. It could be that they're modifying them for use on future boosters. We'll just have to wait and see. Moving back here to the launch site, this week we saw SpaceX starting to rapidly install the shielding panels on the orbital launch mount itself. Here we can see how that process goes. You can see that before putting the shields on the orbital launch mount, it's cleared of rust where they're going to weld. Then, they remove the handrails from the platform. Then, the piece is lifted into place and welding can begin. We'll talk more about this shielding installation process later in the video, but I just have to say, no more skeletal launch mount! Yay! Next up, just like last week, and the week before that, and the week before that, and the week before that, scrapping of Ship 22 continues. As a reminder, the aft dome is where a ship's six engines attach. You can even see two of the mounts for the Raptor vacuum engines here, as well as some of their plumbing. It looks almost like a piece of art. But if you want to get pieces of rockets of your own, check out this video's sponsor, Spaceflight Simulator. Thanks to Spaceflight Simulator for sponsoring this video. Spaceflight Simulator allows you to build and fly your very own rockets right in the palm of your hand. Available in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store for free, you'll be quickly building your own fully realistic rockets with rocket stages, realistic orbital mechanics, re-entry, and landing. Let's go for that. There we go. Look at that. It even adapts it to the uh, size of the capsule. I like that. Um, one more fuel tank under there. And it's got my thrust to weight ratio on the bottom. 1.29, so we can take off with this. Let's see. Oh, I found the color options. The space shuttle geek is coming out in me. We're absolutely going orange. Three, two, one. Oh, look at that. We have liftoff. Spaceflight Simulator features a real solar system built to scale. Real-sized planets and millions of kilometers of distance between them. Okay, maybe we don't want to be completely realistic because traveling between planets can take months or even years. The good news is, Spaceflight Simulator has time warp built in so you can design and fly your very own rocket from Earth to Mars in no time. Fly anywhere and do anything today with Space Flight Simulator for free. Go to nsf.live sfs or click the link in the description. Then click on the link to download the app in your favorite app store. Start your journey to the stars in your very own realistic rocket. Do it. Do it now. I can wait. It's just about to land on Mars. 
All right, getting back into it. This week, Ship 26 was readied for testing on Pad A, while Ship 25 was ready for removal from Pad B. More on them in a moment. First, let's talk about these buoys that were spotted at SpaceX's South Texas tracking site, which is in between the production site and launch site. It's still unknown what these buoys could be for, but there's certainly a lot of possibilities that come to mind. They could aid in surveillance of the marine exclusion zone during launch. They could also be used to monitor the splashdown of Booster 7 offshore. We just don't know. What do you think the boosters are for? Let us know in the comments. I've seen a lot of people wonder if they could be used for monitoring the sonic boom in the splashdown area, which would certainly be useful information. Next up, work on Ship 24 continues at the Rocket Garden this week. Here in this clip, we can see workers going into the payload bay section of the ship. Definitely interesting to think what things they might be doing inside there so the ship is ready for flight. Of course, my mind immediately goes to what payload, if any, will be on the orbital flight test, and if this work is related to that in any way. Next up, in a previous Starbase update, we mentioned how Ship 27's nose cone and payload section were outside the high bay and ready for stacking. Well here, we can see its tank section inside the high bay. We'll come back to that in a bit. This week, we also got confirmation that the 31 engine static fire is the last major test before a Starship orbital flight. This doesn't preclude smaller tests from happening, of course, as we saw last week with some smaller tests like the booster quick disconnect retraction and the single engine spin prime test. It shouldn't surprise us that teams could still be fine tuning things and gathering just a little extra data wherever they can to ensure a safe and smooth flight. Speaking of testing, this week Ship 26 was cryogenically proof tested on Pad A. The ship had its liquid oxygen and liquid methane tanks filled with liquid nitrogen to ensure they don't leak and can maintain their integrity under cryogenic conditions and flight-like pressures. Moving back to Ship 27's parts inside the high bay, they were stacked last Wednesday and a new ship was born. Ship 27 is just like Ship 26. It doesn't have flaps or heat shield tiles, but it does have a payload bay door and dispenser. If you remember, Ship 24 and 25 had their payload bay doors sealed shut. Could Ship 27 become the first ship to deploy Starlink satellites? Speaking of Starlink satellites, we get a lot of questions about how they're loaded onto a ship if the nose cone is welded on. Well, this white box is exactly that, the Starlink loader. We saw the Starlink loader this week coming out of the payload building. Satellites are loaded into it inside the building. They're kept in clean room-ish conditions. And then the box is lifted up next to a ship and loaded into the ship one by one. Continuing down the thread of Starlink satellites, where are the satellites, you might ask? Well, they're in that very building. This week, we got another peek into it, and a bunch of Starlink version 2 satellites were in storage inside the building. We also saw a tool that seems to be used for moving them around. Neat stuff. I can't wait until we see these bad boys released from a starship while in orbit. Next up, while Ship 27 was born inside the high bay, a new booster is about to be born inside the mega bay, with Booster 10's aft section being rolled inside it. Although, interestingly, it was shortly thereafter rolled back to the production tents. Why? We don't know. This is the last piece left to completely stack the liquid oxygen tank of the booster. Though, once it's rolled back out to the mega bay in earnest, and B-10's LOX tank is fully stacked, Booster 10's methane tank, which has been sitting out in the ring yard for quite some time, will then be brought here and stacked on top of the liquid oxygen tank. And Booster 10 will be born. Moving back here to the launch site, we talked earlier about the installation of the shields on the orbital launch mount having begun. Well, later in the week, we saw more panels lifted into place. You can see many more panels have been installed, and by the time of the recording of this video, almost half of the circumference of the orbital launch mount is covered. At this pace, SpaceX could easily finish this work in a week or so. This shielding is critically important to protect all of the plumbing, power lines, valves, and whatever else on the orbital launch mount from the chaos and fury of Super Heavy's 33 Raptor engines during liftoff. Moving right along, you can see here that workers have added a temporary extension to the staircase on the orbital launch mount leg to better access the dance floor. It definitely looks easier to use than having to ride a lift up to the dance floor. Next up, this week we saw the removal of Ship 25 from Pad B and its subsequent rollback to the production site. After hanging out there for a day, the ship was then rolled from the production site to SpaceX's Massey test site a few miles up the road, the furthest any ship has been transported away from the production site. As with so many things, we still don't know why this has happened, but we'll have to keep our eyes open and hopefully we'll learn more sooner rather than later. And finally, and more Booster 7 news, remember the hydraulic power units that were reinstalled on the booster? Their aero covers were put back on top of the HPUs, closing out the work to replace them that started last month. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks again to Space Flight Simulator for sponsoring this video. Be sure to download the app for free, clicking the link in the description. Then click through to your favorite app store. Soon, you'll be building realistic rockets and flying anywhere you like. Alright, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and as always, be excellent to each other.